Hello fellow lifestyle enthusiasts and welcome back for another video on improving your health, wellness, and your lifestyle. And if you're new, I'm Lene, and I help overwhelmed and possibly a little bit out of shape folks to supercharge your health and to simplify your lifestyle so that you can live and love your best life. So if you are interested in videos that inspire simpler and healthier living, then click that little subscribe button and the bell so that you don't miss out on any of my best tips and tricks to live your best life. We have been discussing the different stages of stress, the physiology, and some of my best tips to help you to better deal with your stress. We've also discussed cortisol and its effects on weight as well as aging. So I'll link that playlist for you here if you'd like to go back and check them out. In today's video, I want to discuss the effects of inflammation on the aging process. Short term, inflammation is totally necessary for healing. When we understand the effects of inflammation on our overall health, we can really circumvent the negative side effects of chronic inflammation on our genetic expression of our cells. Here is the thing. Our lifespan is increasing, but our disease span is increasing with it. And it is totally becoming an epidemic. Chronological age is the number, but biological age is the cellular state that can be either older or younger than your chronological number. So there are a few folks out there who have the gene called the FOXO gene, F-O-X-O, uh, that is the gene for longevity. And it is in about one to 2% of the population. But what about the rest of us? The rest of us run the risk of living life with less vitality. Inflammaging is a term that was coined by Claudio Franceschi. I just had to say it that way in the early 2000s and he made the link between inflammatory markers and aging so chronic low-grade inflammation is associated with age-related morbidity and mortality and inflammation is closely linked to telomere shortening of our chromosomes. Now remember, telomeres are those little end caps or shoelace caps at the end of our chromosomes that protect them. What are the signs of inflammation? Well, the signs of inflammation are heat, pain, redness, loss of function, and swelling. So we have acute and chronic forms of inflammation. Acute is life-saving and totally necessary. For example, healing from a paper cut. In fact, even exercise really is necessary for getting some low-grade inflammation, and it's beneficial for us. Low-grade chronic inflammation is the enemy of aging. This can lead to cancer, decreased immune activity, loss of mobility, increased weight, a decline of cognition, which we're all afraid of, and the dreaded chronic diseases of cardiovascular disease and diabetes. What causes inflammation? Well, inflammation is caused by pro-inflammatory cytokines that are released with infection and injury. They're totally necessary for recovery. However, inflammation, when it's chronic, can turn on negative gene expression, and too much of it turns on NF-kappa B. This is activated by 150 different stimuli, such as UV radiation, carcinogens, other cytokines, and bacteria. NF-kappa B alters gene expression in the cell and results in the creating of inflammatory proteins and chronic inflammation. 
It is responsible for activating over 400 different genes. Conversely, the NRF2 pathway decreases inflammation, rids the body of carcinogens, and activates 200 genes that fight oxidative stress. Activating the NRF2 pathway leads to more vibrancy and less inflammation. What turns on the pro-inflammatory cytokine activity, or NF-kappa B? Accumulation of waste, toxins, oxidative stress from free radicals, our genetics, these are all things that are potential causes. Other things in our lifestyle could include smoking, obesity, foods, inactivity, stress, hormone imbalance, and a plethora of other things. A huge contributing factor though is imbalance of our gut bacteria. Dietary increases in omega-6 fatty acids from soy, corn, safflower, canola, vegetable oils, these can all cause an imbalance. Not enough omega-3 fatty acids from nuts, fish, and plants will also cause an imbalance of this pathway. Advanced glycation end product, or ages, from overheating foods and processed foods will cause this imbalance as well. So as you can see, food plays a huge role in pro-inflammatory pathways. So what's the fix? There is hope, and it turns out that there are ways to turn things around. So stick to a whole foods diet. This is the most important thing. You need to avoid all inflammatory oils. Avoid sugar and all processed foods. Eat plenty of good fats like avocado, fish, coconut, olives, macadamia nut oil, MCT oil. Eat more wild caught fish. Eat probiotics, fermented foods, seaweeds, nuts, broccoli sprouts, algae, and plenty of green tea. These all stimulate the NRF2 pathway. Turmeric or curcumin activates this pathway and decreases the bad pathway. Green tea or EGCG activates NRF2 as well. Vitamin D levels regulate over 200 genes in the body, so it plays an important role in proper gene expression. Also, increased nutrients, especially calcium and magnesium. MCHC is a form of calcium necessary for bone rebuilding, and magnesium glycinate and L-theanate are my favorites for improving stress resilience. Avoid fats that are pro-inflammatory, remember those omega-6 oils that we mentioned, and limit your meat intake, dairy intake, and eggs. Number two, pay attention to your exercise and exercise correctly. The right type of exercise is so important. Exercise increases telomere length and decreases stress which will decrease inflammation in the body. The best types are activities that will get your heart rate up, but for not too long. So HIIT training or high intensity interval training increases telomere length. The more you avoid sitting, the more you increase telomere length. Moderate exercise 10 minutes per day with enough sweat is sufficient. Thirdly, sleep quality is important versus quantity. Turn off electronic devices 60 minutes before bed. This suppresses melatonin production when we are exposed to blue light. You can use F.Lux, it's an app, and you can use blue light blocking glasses if you need to. Lack of sleep really does shorten telomere length. So, it's absolutely imperative that you get quality sleep. Mindful living is important. Research is supporting meditation and its effects on inflammation in the body. 
and it really does reduce inflammatory markers and increases telomere length. It also slows down neuroaging and cognitive decline. Attitude is everything as well. How we respond to stress determines the overall outcome. We can see stressors as either a threat or a challenge. Even an ego threat, such as worrying about what others think, can increase inflammatory responses and cytokine activity in the body. Therefore, emotional stress impacts physical responses. This is why meditation and psychological reframing is absolutely necessary when we want to decrease stress responses in the body. One of the best methods to help you with this is called the cognitive diffusion technique. This involves having more compassion when replaying your past records. Say things like, if I would have known better, I would have done differently, or I'm doing the best I can. These are examples of reframing your past. The last thing is rebooting. Regular detoxification is totally necessary if you want to clear up your body of any toxins that are accumulating. This could look like going on a water fast or doing a medical supervised cleanse. It might mean eating within a particular window or eating window every day, intermittent fasting. Whatever it might be for you though, it is imperative that you seek your physician's assistance to make sure you're doing it healthfully. Alyssa Eppel and Elizabeth Blackburn from UCSF have been pioneers in researching the link between telomere length and aging, as well as ways to increase telomerase activity. If you want to read more, grab The Telomere Effect. It's a fabulous book. You can also take personal assessments over at www.amecenter.ucsf.edu. I'll put the link down below for you. So what now? I bet you're a little like me and you like to learn new information, but you're not sure exactly where to start and how much that you'll actually do. So there are two types of people, those who hear information and, and put it into practice and those who hear information and choose to do nothing. So you do me a favor, just pick one area that you know you need help, such as increasing whole foods or decreasing omega-6 fatty acids, uh, improving your sleep hygiene, exercising more intentionally, meditating, or gentle detoxification. And then pick one thing to do as your monthly challenge. The good news is that I have some resources to help you get started. If you need a community to join, then head on over to the Journey Toward Joy Facebook group. You can also be on the lookout for my monthly masterclass called Lifestyle Design Experience, helping you to 10x your health and wellness by improving every aspect of your lifestyle. And you will be doing so with like-minded individuals if you choose to take the class. If you need help with your mindset, check out my video link down below. And of course, I cover the diet most recommended for protecting gene expression, simple workouts, daily detoxification, and creating a winning mindset in my book, The Forever Fat Burner and you can grab a free copy in the link down below. And as always, strive to supercharge your health by simplifying your lifestyle so you can satisfy that lovely soul of yours. Until next time, my friend. Mwah.